Hi, I'm at a major peace building exhibition at Sotheby's in Mayfair. The artwork is absolutely phenomenal. It features 38 Middle Eastern artists whose inspiration derives from um, Khalil Gibran. It's actually sponsored by uh, Caravan and the ambassador for the Lebanese Republic. It's been an amazing night. The artwork is incredible. And as you can see, there is such a buzz. And it's not just in this room. We've got an adjoining two rooms as well. So it's definitely worth a visit. I know it's on for the next uh, week, so do pop along before it finishes. I hope you enjoy this video and my interviews with some of the incredible artists. Ron himself said, we have forgotten, or have we, that there's but one universal language and that its voice is art. And I've got to tell you, at Caravan, more than ever, we strongly believe it could not be timelier for the arts to play a central role in peace building. And during times like this, more than ever, we look for guides. Guides to, as to a way forward for direction and guides for hope. And in that regard, I don't think we can actually find a better guide Hello everyone, I'm with Lulwa Al Khalifa, yes. the, who is looking absolutely stunning today, might I add. I spotted her as soon as I got in, I thought I'm going to ask her where she got her dress from. Now, uh, Lulwa is one of the artists whose work is featuring here at Sotheby's. Lulwa, what inspired you to create this piece behind us? This was inspired by um, reading The Prophet by Khalil Gibran. Such a, a hopeful book that has a lot of lessons and messages, but it made me think about um, faith because when you learn something and you're given messages and lessons you have to have faith in the message and the messenger and so that made me think about where do these lessons fall on our personal landscape of, of who we are as people and, and what are, you know what do we abandon and let go of from ourselves to sort of accommodate these new beliefs and these new you know um, things that we're meant to do and meant to embrace and um, you know I always say that uh, faith is um, you know it's belief with cause without proof so it's literally blind and it's literally something that you have to by design leap and, and, and you know and, and see what happens when you when you go into it so that's that's my, the painting I wanted to have a little tension a little apprehension in her face because you know there is there is ambivalence now the your artwork is called blind faith now where how long did it take you to create it i i paint in a frenzy uh, it took me about two to three days to paint it but it's 16 hours a day yeah. you know i just paint and paint and paint because i need the work to stay wet i paint wet on wet so that's how that's how i just paint in a frenzy until it's done and, and when it's done i know it's done and i just leave it alone and what gets your creative juices going anything many things uh, in this case it was the prophet but mostly it's visual you know I'll see somebody's face or jawline or crooked nose or yeah. that or long neck or you know it's that and now where are you originally based I'm in Bahrain I'm from Bahrain I'm based there and you travel the world showcasing your artwork yes I've been very lucky uh, I've traveled I've showcased here in the in the UK a few times uh, my work was shown in the Victoria and Albert Museum and Saatchi Gallery. It's incredible. Yes, with Art Bob and um, New York, the Hamptons. We're going to Paris next, to Jordan. I've been very lucky. India. Okay. Uh, so the world's your oyster? The world is my adventure. Wow. <laughs> Thank you so much for speaking to me and it's absolutely amazing. Thank you. Hi everyone, I am with another one of the amazing artists featuring their work today at Sotheby's. Now, this is Farad Monfaradi. Correct, well done. Thank you. Farad, tell us about what inspired your artwork, which is actually just quite behind us at the moment. Right. So um, we were asked to present art inspired by The Prophet by Khalil Gibran, this well-known little book that the philosopher and poet wrote. We're at Sotheby's. This organization is called Caravan, and they are a peace-building NGO, so non-government office. And uh, so most of the, well, all the art here is inspired by the Prophet Khalil Gibran. And I chose to do uh, an interview with Khalil Gibran, who has been dead for many decades now. <laughs> and I did an interview with a man to then write his portrait. So it's a written portraiture of the man through the body of his own work. That's incredible. So tell me how that works. 
So basically, um, I do some interviews, obviously, about his background. Uh, I look, I do some research. Sorry, not interviews about his background, who he was. I. Uh, learn about his work some more. I already know his book, The Prophet, quite well. So I wanted to use his quotes, his famous quotes, because he's really well known for sub quotes, in this work to describe who he actually is. And what inspired you? Why, why Khalil Gibran in particular? Well, we were asked, we were asked to honor this man, to pay homage to him. But I do anyway, because uh, when I started my art career 14 years ago, uh, my first works were like this, the written art series. And he was definitely the man to inspire me. And I used to pay homage a lot to his works because he wrote about love, about friendship, about marriage, about children, about work and about justice. So, you know, key points in our lives, everything very important. So do you feel that his work is still relevant and applicable to us today? Absolutely, absolutely. I'm constantly having people quote back to me his words, you know. Absolutely, yeah. He was, he was a peace-loving man. He said, you know, um, he respected all cultures, all religions. He said, I am not a politician. And I think this is the way the world is turning these days. I'm hoping to do some gallery exhibitions. Uh, the next one should be in Geneva, locking that down, fingers yes, crossed. Absolutely. And you're actually based in Geneva, I aren't am. you? And I haven't exhibited in Geneva in a few years, uh, but I'm hoping the next one will be there again. I just finished an exhibition in Bahrain not long ago, and that's originally where I'm from. I'm a Bahraini artist. Amazing. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Thank Farah. You. Hi everyone, I am with Joseph Tuadras. Have I pronounced that correctly? Tuadras, that's fine. Good. Oh, it's a good sign of, uh, of fame when no one knows your last name. It's no, good. no, no, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, you are playing an instrument tonight, yeah. is that right? Yeah, I was playing the oud, the Arabic lute. Uh, it's a very uh, strong uh, instrument in the Middle East, one that represents Arabic music. And um, yeah, they asked me to come and play along. I have a few CDs based on the poetry of Khalil Gibran. I'm very inspired by his work. And so, yeah, they asked me to come along and play, and I did. Brilliant. And how long have you been playing the, is it the Lud for? Uh, I've been playing it ever since I was a, a kid. Uh, my family are of Egyptian background. I was born in Cairo, and uh, it was a link to my heritage. And um, I do find parallels between Gibran and, and myself. I mean, I was born in Cairo and brought up uh, in Australia, Gibran was born in Lebanon and uh, brought up in America more or less, spent a big part of his life in America. So we have that very much hybrid East uh, east and West. I don't like that so much, but more, yeah. uh, 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 more a focus on humanity and what uh, combines us and, and our similarities rather than differences. So how applicable do you think uh, Khalil's work is today? Um, I, th I think it's uh, it's very applicable because he speaks in uh, in love and, and spirituality and humanity and connection and any time you speak of that then it's timeless. I mean the great leaders and uh, great spiritual leaders all have that kind of unifying uh, message and he has also the same message. So um, w when you're very positive about humanity and are looking for things that connect us rather than divide us then uh, that's when you, uh, your works become timeless. So do you write your own pieces of work? Yes, yeah. so I compose music and again I, I look for human emotion. I mean I play a Middle Eastern instrument and um, you know one that's very much a Middle Eastern voice but uh, for me it's, it, my interest is, is connecting with every Everyone and, and you do that through emotions and uh, through all the emotions we share regardless of geography so um, it's not about the exoticism for me it's about um, you know an instrument and a voice saying something to, to people and touching them regardless of where they come from now where do you find the inspiration for your work uh, well Gibran was a very big part of it I mean I, I really love uh, the pulse in his lyrics and and the rhythms um, but yeah really nature and people I really do think uh, people are inspiring and it's about um, you know meeting different people learning about their story and through their story you learn about yourself and and through that understanding you're, you're able to create something uh, that we that resonates with everyone brilliant and can I ask you one final question yes. and that is about your awesome mustache my mustache uh, I mean the mustache maketh the man apparently no I just <laughs> you know just another another bit of cultural uh, appropriation I guess. I'm really really <laughs> digging it so yeah. does it take a lot of hard work yeah, to put well, together? I mean you know I do a lot I do a lot uh, contributing to the community <laughs> with, the, <laughs> with a moustache. Yeah, trying to make the environment a little bit different. So. No fantastic absolutely gorgeous thank, thank you, you so much, much. thank, thank you. you cheers.